Hello and welcome back to the Metasploitable tutorial. In this video we're going to tackle this service here on port 2121. So this is um, an FTP proxy service. If you remember we tackled FTP up here I think in the first video, second video, something like that. So go ahead and see if you can figure this one out for yourself and pause the video. Alright, welcome back. If you figured this out, awesome job. Uh, let me show you how I do this one. Now this one, we can't necessarily get a uh, pop a shell with it, but we can get some more information from it to allow us to get into the machine some other way. So, let's go ahead and open our uh, Metasploit console, and I'm also going to open another terminal. Okay. And we're going to use um, one of them auxiliary scanners. So, auxiliary scanner FTP ah. and then the FTP login. We have lots of options here. And basically what this will do is this will try to brute force usernames and passwords. And it will show us if there's a match for the system. So there are a lot of word lists in Kali Linux and they are here in share word lists metasploit um, yeah I think that's where they are yeah so there's a lot of word lists here and the ones that you would probably want to use for this would be the Unix username and Unix passwords or if there's a Linux one let's see yeah these ones right here would probably be the ones that you would want to use since the Metasploitable virtual machine is Linux. It's a Linux machine. But for sake of time, because those word lists are fairly large, and if I used those, it would probably take a very long time, possibly hours, possibly days, to test them all. We'll just make our own real quick. Just make one called user file. We'll put some usernames in here. We'll put some in here that we know aren't on there. We'll put some that we know are on there. So just put in like Bob, uh, Phil, uh, put squirrel. And then we'll put MSF admin. We'll put admin, maybe user, maybe wheel. like FTP user. That's good enough. Go ahead and save that file. And we'll create another file called pass file. And we'll put some passwords in here. Oh, we got to put in the classics, I guess. All right. Now, let's go ahead and uh, set up our options. Blank passwords. Yeah, false. Brute force speed, five. So this will go from five to zero. 0 being the slowest and 5 being the fastest. There are certain situations where, you know, 5 might sound like you want to put it at 5, but I've used this sort of scanner before, and if you set it to 5 on certain services, on certain machines, it will basically 
it'll try a bunch and then stop because your connection is being denied by whatever you're trying to get into because it sees it as a brute force attack. So if you slow it down, you want to kind of find the sweet spot. Whatever is slow enough that will allow you to bypass that, but fast enough that you're not waiting for weeks. So you'll have to mess with that. For this example, I think we can leave it at five and it'll be okay. Uh, database, we're not doing any of that. Password, pass file. So we'll set, set pass file to uh, pass file. Oops. Okay. Proxies, nope. Record guests, nope. Our hosts, we need to set our hosts to our virtual machine. Is that right? Yep. And so we need to set uh, the R port to twenty one twenty one. Stop on success. We'll leave that off because we want it to go through all of them. Threads username user pass. Oh no! Wait, no. I just want user file down there. I don't know what the user pass file. Maybe that's both. File containing users and passwords. Yep, okay. So, user file. So, I guess you could set up, instead of having two separate files, you could set it up as one file. And verbose, true. Okay, so I think we're good. Let's go ahead and run this. Uh, oh wait, hold on. Is there, there should be an option in here somewhere to use usernames as passwords. Oh, that's what this is, user, user as pass here. So we'll set uh, user as pass true. So now we'll just run it. We'll see if we get a, a password. Actually, you know, I'm going to set the speed a little bit slower. Set. I don't want this to fail. <laughs> Brute force speed. We'll set it to three. Okay, now we'll try it. So see, it's trying our, it's trying our username plus the username as the, you know, password because we set that and then it's trying our username plus the passwords in the password list so we already have a success oh, okay it finished oh we actually have two successes okay so we have this msf admin as the username and msf admin as the password we knew that one was there but we also have this one down here user user so, <clears throat> that is good to know. Now we have, uh, now we have two usernames and passwords that we could use to get onto the machine, you know, with SSH or Telnet or something like that. And MSF admin we know has pseudo privileges, but user uh, might not. We can use user and we can log on, and depending on, you know what access that gives us. We can also, uh, you know, do some privilege escalation, but that's a topic for another video. So yeah, thanks for watching this video. Uh, if, the, if you know a different way to get some information out of this port, feel free to leave it down in the comments. You know, I would love to know it, and I'm sure everybody else watching would love to know it too.